Shana Tova. We're now in the new year. We just entered to 5779. I always say to the Christians, we are a little bit ahead of you, you know? And, uh, and maybe that you need to give us a little respect about, about that we have a little bit more experience. Uh, but even that they don't want to uh, accept it, you know? But uh, with the Muslims, it's the same. You have much more experience, but everybody wants to claim that they are the right ones, the holders of the truth. But there is only one truth. The truth is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Boreo now. There is only one. There is no other besides him. And he said and repeated many times. In this new year, one of the things that in, is in our tradition is, is, the, uh, is the, the gates, we call it, the gates are open, you know, and that we are going to get in in the presence of the Creator. And this is going to be a judgment time, a time in, in which we are going to be looking by the Creator, not by anybody else. And this is the part that I want to talk to you in a very personal way. I have been telling you all the year that I want that the Torah becomes a, 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 the principle that we put in practice, not a, a knowledge that we accumulate and we accumulate and we only we can brag that we know too much. But uh, what, am, what is knowledge without putting in practice or without doing anything? And I prefer to have very little knowledge but uh, practice what I know than to have a, a, a ocean of knowledge and I don't and I have one finger of depth. Now this is the time to search ourselves. This morning that beautiful song that we like to hear over and over and over again, Psalms 139. You know? And search me your Lord, search me, search me. Um, what I want to you at this moment, in a very practical way, is start searching within yourself. And the first thing that you ask yourself is, what are the things that are right now bothering you? And I am using it, a very soft word, bothering you. But really, I can say oppressing you, making you miserable, or they are very destructive to you. What is the thing that are making you so miserable? What are the things in your life right now that are holding you back? And you're going to see one thing at this time of the year. The first thing is we have just the 40 years before we start with the Selichot. You know, this is a, this is a book about to say sorry. You know, many of us, I included myself, I have hurt many people, especially I hurt more the people that are closer to me. Why? Because my greatest enemy sometimes is my own temper. You know how difficult sometimes it is to dominate your temper? And especially you're like me, they're very hot sometimes. And we, I like hot sauce sometimes, you know? And I beat any Mexican to eat hot sauce, you know? And then uh, 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 I get myself in, in situations and circumstances. And who are the people who are, want to receive that? Usually are the people closer to me. They are the forefront, they are, they are, they are close to me. And then what I need to do when I do those things? I need to check, search myself, and I need to say, I'm sorry. And I mean it. I always say to people, don't say, I'm sorry, I will never do a lie again. That will be a big lie. Because you are not capable to totally to hold yourself. But uh, at least you are honest when you say, I felt sorry that I did something to you or I hurt you. How many times we hurt each other by words? You know what is the most difficult thing that has gone through uh, being a rabbi? 
is sometimes when you have your best desire and heart for people and families, and they do something totally the opposite. You know, one of the things that happened because I am a rabbi, I hear too many things very, very private. And then those who have given me or had I have known them in the very private way, things that I have known about these people. They come and they accuse me of things. They're very <laughs> subtle, no? And my desire, because I am very human, in that moment, you know what is my desire to do? But you have a face to tell me that I did that to you when you had done this and this and this and this and this. And to bite my tongue. And I need to ask the, the Creator to forgive me for my thoughts. Because in that moment I would like to pay them back. I would like that they feel my hurt. And I get myself inside a pain. And that pain lasts. And it starts like a cancer, it starts eating me up. And the only way they can be healed from that is when I confess it to the Creator and I put it in His hands. And the beautiful words of the, the prophet who say, that say the Lord, the vengeance is mine. It's Him who make it right, no me. How many times I have had in this situation that I would like to say to certain people certain things in their faces after they have said, done so, so many things to me. Because I am right. And they are hypocrites. But you need to learn when to open your mouth and when to close it. Have you learned about the word sorry? Sorry is more than, is, is more than say sorry. You don't say sorry because somebody is forcing you to say sorry. You say sorry because you mean that you have done something wrong and you need to make it right. That's the truth that you want. Coming closer to the Creator. Because at the end, He is the only one that He is going to judge us. And he's the only one that knows our inmost secret thoughts. That's the reason they say, we say, search me, O God, and look within me and show me. How many things that maybe I am doing that I am not aware that I am doing, they're wrong. And suddenly, something comes and tells me they're wrong. One of the stories in the Tanakh that mesmerized me sometimes ab about the reaction of one of my heroes, David Hamelech, King David. You know, after what he did with Sheva, is the prophet Nathan who goes to talk to him, but if he doesn't go and accuse him. It's very interesting. He knew what he did. He had a high revelation. But instead, to judge him, he said, let me tell you the story. And in that story, he gets so incensed. He said, how such injustice has been done. Tell me who had done it. To go and to cut the head. Hanabi Natan, the prophet Natan, Natan Hanabi, the prophet Natan, say, you are the one. Look at what David did, the king. Oh no, he didn't do that. No, 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 I was forced. She tempted me. I'm like, why she, she, why she bathed uh, naked? That was not my problem. I am a man. Nothing like that. She took it. And 
something that is so important at this time of the year. That he gave us the Behirah of she, the free will, for us as human beings to act according to ourselves. He was not going to put us a pistol on the back or force us to do anything. Totally contrary. Our actions were our actions. In the way we cannot point fingers to others. Like they say, when you point one finger, three are back to you. Totally the contrary. What the Creator wanted for all of us was to be responsible for our own acts. You couldn't get away from it. And you know, we just read the person where I can go on the song, where I can go, is I go to Sheol, no? I, I, I love it, I love it when I, I, I was listening, no? Where I can go and escape from your spirit? And where can I flee from your face? If I made my bed in Sheol, you will find me. If in heaven I am still behold your grace, if I raise, I, if I rise on the on the wings of the dawn, or settle on the farthest side of the ocean vast, even there, your holy hand will guide me, and your right hand will always hold me fast. We are here. We are a group. We are a community. I want to something I want to ask you, to you, but I ask myself. I can ask you more than I can ask myself. Okay. And we start learning to be honest with ourselves. This is a very hard, hard path in life. You know, most of the time, we are like a, the ostrich. You know, the ostrich thing that it becomes if the ostrich had his faith, his eyes, he, he blinds his eyes, danger is going to go away. The only thing that the ostrich needs to do is to close their eyes. And that's the one more vulnerable becomes. Totally the contrary. When we confront, when we become aware of something that we have done wrong, nothing better than to come true right. You know, I was telling somebody that when I do uh, a marriage counseling, a pre-marriage counseling, I like to do pre-marriage counseling. You know, there, there are several theories and several opinions and several groups, but to me, I like it when you go to a covenant, go clean. Open. Nothing hiding. Not, nothing under the under the table, nothing on cover. You know, when you go to a covenant, when a couple meet each other, I say to them, before they say, do you have anything in your life that you are ashamed of? Do you have something that you want to hide from everybody? I say, this is the time that you can trust your companion. And it's better that you share something like that. Because what is going to happen is that once you get married, and later on, 
Your companion learns something about you that you didn't share. That will cause you the destruction of your real. Your companionship. You need. When we make a covenant with the Creator, many of us we think we can hide things to Him. That is impossible. It's better to have an open sheet and to talk to each other and to be clear. The Creator is listening. He already knows. But He wants you to be clear with yourself. That's the reason I say we need to start learning to be honest with ourselves. And the thing is about, do you have that sometimes you have frustrations? You know? It's so easy to be frustrated when the things don't happen according to the way that you want it. And what happens when you're frustrated? The first thing that you do is you get upset with everybody. Well, I am talking about myself, no, but maybe you, you are different when you have all this type of frustration. You, you get up, you know, you cut, you cut contact with others. And the first thing they say, there's no word to do this, I am wasting my time. What to get involved? <laughs> what to get involved in this? Then, we little by little, we start the song, they call it. Oh, poor of me. And you become the victim. And you love to lick your wounds, you know, <coughs> and to say how victim. And you want now the compassion of everybody else. You need it. But you know, in those moments, the Creator wants you strong. And the strength is going to come from Him. Because his, his words and His presence is going to tell you, you are never alone. You are with me. And finally, in this area of the Sally Hawk, of the sorry. One of the things I was talking to you at the beginning about vengeance is mine, said the Lord. It teaches too much of a venue that we do not need to get upset with the Egyptians, for example. But the Egyptians make us slaves for so many years. We suffer under them. What can we like the Egyptians? And maybe that could happen today with the Palestinians. It's easier to hate because when you hate, you don't need to have any type of relationship. You cut. But when you forgive, you need to restart a relationship. How many times I have heard this thing among our people? Oh, I already forget them, but I I don't want you to see them in, in, in a picture, you know? And, or people say, I cannot forget it. that for the rest of my life. Let me tell you, when you do that, and this is to learn from the Torah, why the Creator ask us to forgive the Egyptians? Something very simple. If you are a psychologist, you will understand it. Because meanwhile you hate the Egyptians, you are still under their slavery. You're being caught. Even though you think you're free, you're still a slave of them. Right now, I see all over the world so much hate. In the Middle East, it's un unbearable. Everybody hates everybody. Everybody's killing to each other. You know? In Africa, don't say this, but it's almost worse. 
want to tell you about Latin America. We have a country right now that used to be the light of Latin America, used to be the pearl of Latin America. I remember that that country, all the Latin Americans, instead of going to the United States, they would go to that country because that was a beautiful country that had so much to offer. And what is happening right now? Have you heard that saying? There is no evil that lasts 100 years and there is no any human body that can take it. No hay mal que dure sin años ni cuerpo que lo aguante. Then, at this beginning of this new year, which is totally different to the Gentile New Year, that we go to drink and to get drunk and, ah, and, we, and we make promises and we this and we that. We Jewish people, we don't do promises. We are not allowed to make vows. And you are going to see just on Yom HaKippurim, we have a, a just in the even. We need to start saying, please forgive us for, this, for, for the vow that we have made. Yeshua, our great teachers, say to us that our yes needs to be yes and our no needs to be no. Don't make vows for anything. How many promises you have made that you have not kept? You see, you think people are going to forget. They don't forget. You will try to forget, but they don't forget. For us, it's not like a, a regular New Year. It's totally the country. It is making a balance of our life during the last year. What have we have done? And to see the pros and the cons. To see the positive side and the negative side. To look for a balance. And try to make right but we did wrong. Try to acknowledge our faults and to try to be better the next year with the help of the, the help of each other. But we don't promise because we are human. It's not about promising. It's about doing it. This is why we are so different. Because at this time of the year, there is a heavy time. You know, in Israel they call it, in, in other places they call it the Yamin Noraim, a very, a very tra a simple translation uh, in the time would be the terrible days. What is are terrible? That, that terrible doesn't translate very well. But I would say the heavy days. Because we need to deal with ourselves. Let me go back now from the beginning. This I start. Are we honest with ourselves? This is what is the most important part of this time of the year. Because when we listen, the blow of the shofar, the teruah, the Teruah is like a, a prayer, a prayer of being aware, a prayer of being, you need to stand up to put in attention, a prayer that means be ready, you are not alone, be careful, there is danger, but you have protection, you do the things right. Are we honest with ourselves? This is 
the big question today. The not to be or not to be. The big question now is, are we honest with ourselves? La Shana Tobah. Umet.